Hey folks, Rue here. Just wanted to let you know that this episode of Ruel's Running Podcast is sponsored by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health conscious people get special life insurance rates. Health IQ can save the listeners of Ruel's Running Podcast up to 33% because physically active people have a 56% lower risk of heart disease a 20% lower risk of cancer, and a 50 per, 58% lower risk of diabetes compared to people who are inactive. Health IQ uses science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health-conscious people, including runners, cyclists, strength, strength trainers, and more. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com slash Ruel, or mention the promo code R-U-E-L, when you talk to a Health IQ agent. Podcasting from somewhere in the San Francisco Bay Area, the birthplace of Bruce Lee, the iPhone, and the Bendy Straw. This is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. There was a dream a million miles away. There was fire in the- Amazon.com. Calm. You know, I won't be surprised if more and more stuff that I shop for, buy, and get shipped to my home comes from Amazon. It's just a reality, right? And if this is your reality, go to ruelsrunning.com, click through to the Amazon banner to get to Amazon. Why am I asking you to do so? Well, it is a no-cost-to-you way, if you like listening to Ruel's Running Podcast, it is a way that you can help the show out without spending more than you've already spent while shopping at the good folks at Amazon.com. So help us out. Go to RuelsRunning.com, click through to the Amazon.com site, and shop, connect, and enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome to Ruel's Running Podcast. I'm your host, Ruel Abadam, and I once again am on the go. How's everybody doing? Hope you guys are doing fine. Um, I'm not sure what it's like at your part of the world, but right now it's a little wet. Got, it's been raining for the past couple of days, and... Um, I'm actually pretty excited because uh, I intend to get in on the rain action, meaning I'm not going to be spraying everybody with water or liquid, but I want to go out for a run today and, you know, if I, if I get rained on, so be it. Um, I need to feel all of that rain on my body. It's also kind of cold, not freezing cold, but cold for me at the moment. Um, it's just me. Maybe I'm dying. I'm certain I'm dying. Um, we all get there eventually. But that's kind of morbid, and I, I apologize. Um, but what I do want to say is, if you are a return listener, welcome back. Glad you're here. And if you are a new listener, uh, hey, how did you find me? Uh, okay, you should stick around and see what you're getting yourself into. You must be bored. Maybe you're going out on a run and you need something to plug into your ear just to keep your mind occupied. Um, hopefully this does it. Um, so, what's going on, guys? This is the, um, I believe, the second uh, episode for 2018. If uh, you haven't heard the first episode, I uh, would like to wish you Happy New Year here. Welcome to 2018. Ah something about the new year that somehow it gets you, at least it gets me, gets me wanting to sit down, oh hush, gets me wanting to sit down and, um, and, um, as I kind of draw a blank, um, something about the new year that makes me want to sit down and um, start with a clean slate and uh, 
try and get excited about things. Um, I'm not, um, I don't ordinarily do a lot of major goal setting. It's usually the time of the year like this, but, um, I, I've been too busy to actually declare I am setting my New Year's goals and resolutions. But despite that, I, um, I still find myself there, um, without having to, without having to, uh, sit down and make a list. I guess it started with, okay, here we are, 2018, I want to accomplish, I guess this is where I get into some run chat. I get, I, uh, I realize, um, there's a trail event that I did last year that I want to make sure that I register for and uh, participate in. So then that started the whole ball running where, where, okay, I'm going to go to the websites. I'm going to see if they're available to, to sign up for. And while I'm at it, take a look at the other events that I want to participate in. I mean, it wasn't too long ago where I didn't do any events because I didn't want to deal with you know the cost of registration I didn't want to you know take time away from my family uh, too much but somehow I'm in a position where I could actually find some great events to participate in which are somewhat local uh, this side of the bay, you know, there's one in Berkeley, there's one in um, Lake Chabot, and there's one in uh, um, Fremont, where I'm at here in San Francisco Bay Area. So, you know, I could spread those out, you know, not kill myself doing races or, or events or runs every month, but spread them out, probably do something like a 50K uh each quarter although you know for those who have been listening for a while I've yet to accomplish the 50 mile distance that has eluded me and I haven't I haven't thought about it for quite some time because you know last year's participation in several in in a few trail events you know I didn't get to complete the distance for all of it and that was at the that was 50 those were 50 k's but there were 50 k's with climbing and 50 k's with heat or 50 k's with a shit ton of rain and mud um so you know it's not just the distance i can cover the distance but there are other elements that make it you know a great challenge so i've those have occupied my time wanting to be able to do the 50k distance for these events um where i'm happy you know complete them and be happy knowing that you know they've been pretty challenging so you know i've not thought about 50 miles but as i you know spend the time to to identify races or events that I want to participate in this year, I start wondering, where can I fit in? Would would I be able to fit in doing something like a 50-mile or, or a 12-hour event? And there is, there's a 12-hour event smack dab in the middle of the summer. I'm not sure how I feel about um, participating in it, but it's one of those things that um, make it possible, you know, it, just go out for 12 hours and see what I can do. It's in San Francisco. And, you know, for whatever reason, heading across the bay to San Francisco feels almost like I'm really spending a lot of time away from my family, which I don't want to do. But it's kind of silly because I work in San Francisco, so whatever. Um, The other option, if I was... if I wanted to challenge myself to cover the 50-mile distance is... I just, I don't know why, I just thought about and identified um, there is a, a loop that I can do from home, uh, which is approximately uh, slightly above eight miles. So I have this eight mile loop that I can do um, from home. I was telling my wife about it the other day. If I 
did eight of those, I'd be, you know, that'd be a good solid distance, right? 24 miles, you know, and, you know, there's a little bit of climbing, there's a little bit of elevation, but, you know, it isn't technical terrain. It's, it's all like sidewalk and street type stuff. It's, it's around, you know, several neighborhoods. And, uh, you know, if I did four loops, you know, I'd be covering at least a 50k. You know, if I did five loops, you know, I'm close to that 50 miler. It'd be definitely more than I've ever done before. I've only hit my large, my, my longest has been what 41, 42 miles. Um, so, you know, that's uh, that's something that's an option. Um, but so for this year, definitely looking at. Uh, doing the Berkeley Trail Adventure again, looking at doing the uh, Red Tail Ridge at Lake Ch- Chabot, and um, you know I've been looking at the Ohlone 50K website, and that's the one in Fremont that ends in Livermore, um, close to where I'm at. So that one, um, that one's going to be interesting because there are two, you know, there's a 10-hour uh, race cutoff for the Ohlone 50k from what I've read but around mile 9 and around mile 12 I think there are sort of these aid station uh, cutoffs so after the first climb and descent there's a aid station and there's a you, you have to hit a certain time below a certain time otherwise you get cut off then you get transport back to your to the uh, to your vehicle and then the other is a small is is a, is, a, is a uh, another short climb or a, a similar climb with a shorter descent. And um, there's another aid station and cutoff. If you don't make that, you you just have to hike it back down to the first uh, previous <coughs> cutoff point and get a ride back to your vehicle. But from there, it's the big climb. And then the big descent and the finish. So I'm not familiar with that those trails. I'm not familiar with a lot of trails. It's pretty sad. Um, I contemplate doing that first nine miles just as a, uh, a scouting sort of run, long run. I'm not sure if I'll be able to figure out the time for that. I'll have to. I'll have to hit up um, a friend who's familiar with those. Uh, trails and uh, find out um, if uh, she'd be interested in doing that with me and she could hopefully show me around um, things to think about while I do that I don't know, we'll see Um, I mean but I don't want to occupy all of my time with the running if that even sounds like it makes any sense um, so what I mean is, I need to, I need to, I need to get myself fit. You know, I'm less than a month. No, I'm, I'm a little, I'm about a month away from the first trail event, and I have to register. I haven't reg- put in my money yet. And uh, speaking of money, I'm at a point in time where I can register for some of these events now that I've identified some item, some that are sort of local, and um, I'm able to actually get reimbursement for some of these rate registrations um, so I get my money back in the name of health and wellness which is awesome so you know I'm in a good time I should take advantage and as I make plans to try and get fit for the first run I'm gonna also view the first run as a way to condition myself for the, for uh, for the rest of the year, um, you know, I need to plan in the typical weekend long run. You know, I let the past weekend pass me by. Not, I didn't get to do any sort of a, a long run. You know, hoping to do at least a couple hours out. Um, so that's all on me. You know, I need to be able to get up um, probably by sun up or slightly before. And head out. Um, I need to get accustomed to the cold air and the wetness, you know. Which is why 
you know, I'm kind of excited today. It's not early morning, but, you know, it is cold and it is wet. So if I can get exposed, uh, you know, I can familiarize myself with all of those sensations and stuff and reacquaint myself and um, get that appreciation for it. Because, you know, I can remember back when I would be the only guy running out somewhere and it's raining and felt felt great you know the, the air this time of the year is awesome it's cool and it just feels clean and crisp so more on that running stuff I, you know if you have running goals and stuff uh, you know let me know um, happy be uh, curious to know what others are doing <clears throat> I recently pinged uh, an old friend from the show good old Tony Portera another one of those um, ultra badasses and uh, guys that I view as a hero um, you know in endurance you know I've been following Tony on Facebook and he's been posting a lot of you know inspiring photos of him and previous events that he's been at and you know, seeing pictures of other, you know, icons in in the ultra running sport, and um, you know, it's it's inspiring and makes me wonder, you know, what's going on with uh, Tony and and uh, what 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 is uh, churning in his uh, calendar as far as doing some adventure or some ultra endurance thing. Um, I love hearing those stories and I love getting inspired by those guys and I love sharing um, stories when I can. And that's that. That's that for now on running. I'll keep you guys posted on uh, how things go as I get closer to um, my events and and what I do to try to prepare or what I don't do to not prepare. (laughs) Awesome. Health IQ, rated 9.6 out of 10 on Trustpilot. Uh, customers love them. <clears throat> you, know, you know Ryan Hall, the fastest marathoner in American history and the only United States athlete to break the one-hour uh, time for the half marathon? He, um, this is what he has to say about Health IQ. Quote, It's perfect because it's made for people like me with, healthy, with a healthy, active lifestyle. Unquote. The lower heart rates that many pro athletes have can sometimes negatively affect insurance rates. Hall liked the fact that Health IQ used this active lifestyle as an asset in getting a good life insurance rate rather than it being a detriment. He, he commented that he appreciated how Health IQ made the process easy and simple for him, given how limited his time already was. Health IQ is the fastest growing life insurance company with over $5 billion in coverage. So, like saving money on your car insurance, for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on your life insurance for living a health-conscious lifestyle. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com slash ruel. Or mention the promo code R-U-E-L when you talk to a Health IQ agent today. What I wanted to talk about was um, sort of the NSNG lifestyle, the no sugar, no grains lifestyle, which is um, talked about many times in the past. I haven't covered it, addressed it so much lately on the podcast because um, I just kind of feel like I've touched on it. Why should I talk about it again? But I guess I should. For the new listener and for the uh, the uh, usual listeners who just want to hear it again, and uh, I'm not trying to come across as eh, it's it's not a big deal. Why should I? Um, I actually believe that I should try my best to talk about it again because. You know, I've uh, I I don't often do, and I don't often talk about anything that 
might be helpful to any of the listeners. And um, I kind of want to talk about it in a way that I'm going to try to try to help somebody. Um, you know, recently there were at least two people in my life who wanted to know more about this way of eating who could stand to benefit from this way of eating the NSNG no sugar no grains way of eating but you know I found myself stumbling fumbling just giving bits of information here and there no real order which is typical of my way of thinking and communicating isn't it but it isn't helpful sometimes that it's confusing it's cryptic and um, so I guess I'm gonna make another attempt to add some clarity and so no sugar no grains way of eating like the lifestyle is a uh, you know, if if you the quick the quick answer is you know go to vinnytortorich.com, v i n n i e t o r t o r i c h dot com, slash, learn. There's information there, and a lot of information there for those who like to read, who just want want specific answers to things that concern that you have questions on, like, well, what can I eat? Right. Um, go there, right? Download the Vinny's free PDF and, uh, you know, get access to a lot of free audio of interviews from experts in nutrition and health and, and who are aligned with the no sugar, no grains way of eating. So... Um, so with that aside, as, and that as a reference and the go-to place, um, there's additional. There's an additional reference. There's an additional resource which is on Facebook. Um, it's kind of tricky. There's a Vinnie Tortorich's No Sugar No Grains Facebook group. It's a closed group, but it's not the main group. There's several hundred people there. I, I'm one of um, the admins along with Lonnie Beecham and. Um, Mark Thompson and uh, several others there you know you you find you can find that by searching Facebook and you can request to be added and once you know to be able to to, to gain access to that group but it, it isn't straightforward you have to answer just a few sort of questions at the beginning and it's important that you do if you don't then don't even think that you're gonna get in and that's not to be exclusive or douchey or anything like that, but it is a way that we're able to filter out folks who are not uh, human. <laughs> that even makes sense. You know, we want to keep away. Um, we want to prevent folks who, or we want we want to pre- prevent spammers, if you will. We want to encourage folks who have learned about. NSNG and Vinnie Tordrich and Fitness Confidential, you know, all of that, that whole community. We want to encourage folks who have learned about those things somehow who want to get in. We want to encourage those folks to get in. And once in, you know, you can send a direct message to a, um, an admin uh, if you want to be added to the main group, Right? And the main group is a private group. It is the big group. It's, there's over 20,000 members in that group, which, you know, the same handful of admins are admins for. And that is where, that's been around for like five years now. And it's grown and it's evolved. And there's a lot of people who are old and new in the lifestyle, in the community. And everyone's learning from each other. And there's a lot of helpful, experienced folks in the lifestyle. And um, so that's, the Facebook groups are a second resource, right? So you go to Vinny's, you go to you go to Vinny's site, you get the PDF, you get the intro to NSNG, you gain access to the Facebook group. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly talk as if I'm talking to uh, a family or a friend 
who wants to know what to do and what I what I what I usually start with is cut out you know your processed grains you cut out your sugars and sweeteners right no sugars no grains no sugar no grains so sugar counts as uh, sweeteners artificial or natural you know because your body sees it all as the same no matter what you think um, and as you cut out sugars and sweeteners as you cut out processed grains like wheat you know even rice right um, you look you you basically allow yourself to consume more of you know vegetables whole vegetables and meats and fish right and nuts and healthy oils um, I know everyone has their allergies and whatnot you know things they can't eat so you know you want to take those into consideration but as you move along knowing that you're eliminating certain foods that have sweet neuro sugars or processed grains you're wondering you might be wondering well then what do I eat and what you do eat and what what you can eat as I mentioned meats and fish and vegetables and nuts and oils and whatnot um, you, you might have a concern about things like saturated fat and your cholesterol and all that stuff um, so you know when I talked about getting access to the audio interviews on a Vinny site via the the intro to NSNG you know and those experts and those doctors who are aligned with NSNG or whom NSNG is aligned with you know you will discover you can discover that you know saturated fat from from meat and you know and other healthy fats that come from other um, let's say fruits like olives and avocados and coconut you know those are healthful as well and what you um, in addition to the avoidance of sugars and grains and sweeteners um, the other things that you'll need to learn along the way too is that a lot of the cooking oils that is around now isn't healthful healthful like vegetable oil like corn oil like canola oil um, so you know it starts off pretty basic no sugar no grains but then you have to also learn that there are healthful things in in meats and fish and all of these um, these uh, these healthy oils um, and you also learn that you know you don't have you, sh you 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 learn where there's a benefit to cholesterol in the human body and I'm not talking like I'm a physician or any, or an expert that's why I say you know look to those experts you know seek them out seek that information out and find out uh, why I say what I'm saying and so when you eliminate sugars and grains and all the the toxic oils and whatnot um, and you're eating all of these things that you maybe were afraid to eat you're 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 filling a gap you you're 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 replacing what you're you're replacing one thing for the other and the idea is you're replacing it with healthier stuff and stuff that won't um cause you to you know gain weight or hold on to weight or things like have a addiction to sweet a sugar craving um when you the funny thing is when you don't eat the sugars and the sweeteners you for a long time then you'll f tend to find out that hey I'm not craving it so much and when you do it really uh, surprises you how intense it is and if you do af after cut cutting it for a long time and you do have some you realize how having a little bit will cause you later in a few hours to actually start having cravings so um, it's an addiction that a lot of folks don't realize they have because they've you know folks even me in the past have just got so used to having those things in the diet um, so this is it's, it's a big deal it's a big thing to learn it's a big thing to get used to but that's kind of uh, 
my additional discussion on the topic. Um, there are definitely res- uh, other resources. Um, you know, one one of one good resource is um, a book by Nina Teichals called uh, "The Big Fat Surprise" or "Big Fat Surprise." That's a book you can look into. That's also an audio book. I've consumed it via audio book. Um, you know, and if you want to know more about Vinnie Tortorich, uh, check out his book, and you'll learn about. You'll be surprised that what you might, what the general public knows about fitness and health, um, really isn't helpful to folks. <laughs> in his book, uh, and his book fitness confidential check it out and what i mean was he gives an example one example of the book is he talks about um you know health clubs fitness clubs you know um you'll be surprised um coming from his his experience you know and he's got several decades in the field and has a lot of a lot to say about it so that's one resource you can do to find out more about the man vinnie tortorich um, and if you're like me, who listen to podcasts, you could check out his podcast, right? Fitness Confidential podcast. You can find it on on uh, Apple Podcasts and and other places where most podcasts can be found. You know, whether that be Spotify or you know um, Google Play, whatever. You know, um, what else? Yeah. Um, that's that. Um, so a quick example of how I go about eating, and now I'm I'm like five, I'm five about five years into this whole lifestyle, and I've you know I've had my moments where I'm really strict, and I have I've had my moments where I've kind of slipped a little bit and enjoyed. But if you do slip a little bit, it's always easy to just it's 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 easy to just go back, and there is no guilt, you know to to being aligned with no sugar, no grains, and eating more of the healthy whole foods. Um, one of the things to talk about when when you eat this way, you know, and this is basically a, has alignment with low carb, healthy fat lifestyle or banting, um, you know, maybe even paleo. Um, but what happens is by reducing or cutting out processed grains and sugars and sweeteners you're automatically consuming less carbohydrates than you know the, the standard american diet and that's where the low carb and the low carb high, healthy fat or high fat comes from but in my opinion it shouldn't be called low carb it should just be called normal and the standard American diet or the standard Western diet with all of the processed grains and sugars and sweeteners is actually a high carbohydrate diet and lifestyle. So, you know, most of the folks out there are continually consuming high amounts. And from what I've learned, and you could learn too, or you may already know, is when you overconsume sweet stuff and carbohydrates, you know, from these things, you know, you and you, it's in high amounts you know you've got your body's going to store it store the excess it's going to take what it needs for its muscles for the muscles and the blood and organs and then excess gets stored as fat you know you by the use of uh, other hormones like insulin um but you know what i've also learned is you know the part of the human body that produces the insulin i believe it's the pancreas and if i'm wrong i apologize you know it has a lifespan you know it'll do what it's supposed to do but if it does if it's asked to do a whole lot like trying to cover the overconsumption of sugar and carbohydrates um it's going to wear out faster and that's a problem and you know, people have gotten to a state where their pancreas is so damaged that they uh, lose that ability to produce the insulin. And that's when you basically fall into a state of type 1 diabetes, right? Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physician. This is just stuff that I've learned over time. And you should um, do your own research to find out if any of that makes sense and if there's any truth to it. Um, there are other resources, other books... 
uh, and that also have audiobook formats that you could consume. And I put those in a list of books that are on my website, ruelsrunning.com slash resources. You know, it's they're listed with a bunch of other sort of endurance-related and sport-related books. I haven't updated that resource page in several months. Um, actually, that the Big Fat Surprise book isn't even in that list, so I apologize. But take note and check out other books in there. Um, but um, I'll leave it with that because then this is to, uh, th- it gets to a point where I just ramble. Um, if any of this makes sense um, and it is helpful, I'm, you know, I'd be, uh, I'd like to hear your feedback and h- have your comments. Um, and you know, you could just reach out on uh, on the website, you know, um, and that'd be great. So hopefully that helps out um, for folks who are curious. And hopefully that's sort of a refresher. You know, I, I've i been listening to a lot of information regarding this stuff for a long time. And, you, you know, I get surprised every now and then. And even though I hear the same thing over and over again, I really appreciate it. Um, so that's, that's that. Awesome. So hug your friends, eat something delicious, and go run something. Bye. Thanks for listening to Ruel's Running Podcast with Ruel. If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast.